How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Getting good grades. Suit yourself mm-hmm. right. Got to wear shades. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> nice. Nice. Leftover from my True Beverly Hills costume. Um. So President Joe, Joe Biden has won the presidency again. again. <laughs> Someone on Twitter said, and I kind of agreed with it, they should write a different victory speech for every time something like that happens. <laughs> and he should just be giving a speech every day. <laughs> he should just be giving a new victory speech every single day until inauguration. Because it, what is it's become this ridiculous situation in America that, that <laughs> Trump is, is, is trying to contest the he's election like, well, we'll let him do his little transition thing i guess but like he's not gonna be president though it is, we'll he's let trying to plan his little inauguration we've had like they certified one state and you know you know they certify another state every day it's like we're trying to just re-cement the act it's it's freaking ridiculous yeah. here what was it you heard on the news today he's realized he's not going to get to use air force one anymore yeah the other thing I saw that I found funny is that he gets, because of where the inauguration platform is, yeah. he's getting to watch it be built every single day. Because it's like right across the street. I mean, he said, you know, Biden keeps winning and winning and winning. And Trump said we'd get tired of winning. But I didn't know he meant this. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd known he meant this, I still would have not voted for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired of winning myself, actually. <laughs> Can we just move, a, move the night long? Can we just have you go and be irrelevant again and not have to think about you anymore? That would be nice. Well, in uh, in other news, more relevant to the show news. Um, so this is going to be a weird year for yeah. us because normally around Thanksgiving time, um, there's Black Friday in the United States of America, um, which is that stupid shopping extravaganza that results in a day to be thankful for everything that we have and then the very next day we beat the shit of each other to buy more except this year except this year maybe not because we we are still people are you know even though everything's open we've reopened yeah people ain't going (laughs) People don't want to. I'm interested to see what happens because, like, obviously you're going to have places open, but like they're supposed to operate at limited capacity. How do you do that with crazy Black Friday people? How do you door bust? Yeah. I've seen a lot of people just doing, a lot of places just doing like month long Black Friday online. Yep. I've been seeing that too. Reverb's been doing that. Uh, And like, if we could just change to that model, it would be great. Yeah. So, that but we normally cover the carnage. Um, the annual and, Hunger Games. Yeah, only this year it's not. It's going to be weird, and it's you yeah. know what? I, I'm not sad for our account because you know while while it is good for my show, what's good for my show is normally bad for us as a people. Yeah, you know what it's going to be this year. What? We're going to have people yelling at Black Friday employees about having to wear a mask to get yeah. the doorbusters. That's what it's going to be this year. It's just getting a little old, but uh, nonetheless, we can we we soldier on, and uh, I'm sure somebody will do something stupid. We'll be okay. Oh yeah. Let's get going. Let's get the intro rolling. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Keep rolling, rolling. Rolling with the homies. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, it's just another one of those things that happens. I guess I haven't spent a lot of time in New York. But what little time I have spent there, I've, I've kind of gotten used to that. The idea that, oh, this is New York, stuff just happens, you roll with it. 
you know, stuff that in any other place in the world would get you looks in New York. It's, it's, keep- it's so hard to weird out a New Yorker. Legit, I was walking down a Manhattan street with one of my friends and there was a body with a pool of blood around it in the street. And I freaked out and they were like, Tara, they're just shooting law and order. <laughs> Because there's like 15 different Law and Order shows, and they all shoot in Manhattan, <laughs> so that's the assumption now. People find a fucking body. Yes, they were just shooting. There wasn't really a body, but that's their first assumption. Oh, they're shooting Law and Order. Dun 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 dun. Like, what if that was real? Nothing is real. Everything is real. It's 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 all, it's all an illusion. It's a grand parade. All right. Um. So the first one, however, this one, this instance, kind of got. New Yorker's attention, oddly. Um, <laughs> we got video. Um, this was shot in New York. This wild scene in New York. Uh, here's a dude climbing on top of a bus with a flamethrower. With a fucking flamethrower. It's one of the few things they won't that, that will get people's attention. NYPD is investigating after a media and so, uh, video on social media surface showing a man shooting a flamethrower into the air as he's on top. Look at top. all the phones. Look at all the people that are just like that. That is our reaction now, isn't it? We we see we see the shit and we're like, oh, get 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 it get it on the iPhone. It didn't happen if you don't have it on Instagram. Picks or it didn't happen became a creed. Did you notice that shit? Yeah. Um. Let's put this up here so everybody can see it. This guy thinks he's the fucking guitarist from Mad Max Fury Road. Like, you're on a bus. Actually, you know what I was thinking of? And it's, it's, I'm dating myself so terribly here. We were Lost Boys. The dude with the sax. (laughs) There you go. We saw him perform live. (laughs) Like two years ago. Uh, Back when you could go places in public. Incident took place on uh, on November 8th along the B-26 bus route near Franklin Avenue. Flames come shooting out of the weapon and high into the air and later on the ground as the man jumps around on top of the bus. There are about two dozen people inside the bus at the time. What the fuck? Can you imagine being in that bus? Just... Uh, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> There's a man on top of the bus firing a flamethrower. Please uh, do not be alarmed. Please do not be alarmed. Welcome to New York. Uh, so. And like New York, especially New York City, has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. So where did this motherfucker even get a flamethrower? Flamethrowers are not covered by gun laws. Really? Flamethrowers are true. They are not. Ask, ask the dude behind you. Is that true? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Fl- flamethrowers are regular. They should be. The only reg- reason I don't own one is because of you. <laughs> they're regulated. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> they're, they're, they're regulated differently and in most cases fairly lightly. It is, you don't, there's no, not even a background check for that shit. You could fucking assemble one yourself and it's perfectly legal. Yeah, I've I've heard many a dissertation on how easy it is to build one from this guy. It's it's just it's one it's you can there's no problem with it. We could just I, I did not realize that. That's very upsetting. Oh yeah, you just So yeah, what he's doing here is I I'm kind of not sure what this falls under in terms of what laws are being violated here. I mean, um, it's still a deadly weapon. There are no laws banning the use of flamethrowers in the city. However, there's currently a bill before the state Senate that would make owning one a felony. Are you goddamn serious? Yep. Nothing. I'm hoping that's because that's one of those things they didn't think they had to specify. <laughs> right? It's like, well, like, we... Do we need to write that down? We, we don't actually have to make a law we about... To, we don't have to write that down, right? Like, people know. Never assume people know. Nope. Greedy. All right, you can sit. You, Hi, Greedy. You Look can you. you can sit on the printer. I guess it's not the amplifier. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on the amp. Technically, I am within the law. <laughs> yeah. Well, Simba's not allowed in the kitchen while Dan's cooking because he bites toes. <laughs> so he will sit right on the edge of the area rug in the living room. 
like right on the edge of it and yell at Dan. <laughs> He's like, I'm not in the kitchen, motherfucker. Our next one is coming from a, well, somewhat functioning country that's trying to handle the uh, the pandemic with a lockdown from France. Um, there are, they actually have, you have to apply to go and do stuff. You have to have a reason to go out of lockdown. Yeah, they have little forms, right? Yeah. And uh, I, you know what? I, this is probably, I could not stop laughing when I fucking read this because. Tell Dan to wear socks. Yeah, you don't understand the, the jaws of death <laughs> that exist within my orange cat. I don't have chainmail socks. Right. Yeah. We're talking like steel toe boots. So, yeah, um, guy filled out his form to go and leave lockdown. Man fined for breaking lockdown to smash a guy's face in. <laughs> French police have fined a man who left his home with a written lockdown declaration stating he was out to, quote, smash a guy's face in. I mean, did he have a good reason? <laughs> the man who has not been named is reportedly correctly filled in the legally required declaration known as an attestation with his name, address, and time he left his home. <laughs> However, officers found that instead of taking away the box of stating a legitimate reason, um, these include going shopping, visiting the doctor, the man had written smash a guy's face in an activity not covered by the form. That's totally something he would do. <laughs> You're like, what? There's a section for other. Like, well, I'm that's other. I'm following the rules. What? Come that on, work with me. Space smash it. <laughs> right, work with me here. <laughs> I just, I love the fact that he actually put his name, his address. Yeah, it is 10 p.m. I'm going out to kick a motherfucker's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I will be back. I feel like in some countries this would fly. It's 10 p.m. Okay, it's on my calendar. Like, if you tried this shit in Ireland, they'd be like, all right, fair play. It's 10 p.m. I will be back at by 10.05. <laughs> <laughs> um, during the earlier lockdown, one man told officers, quote, I'm fed up with my wife. I must absolutely go and see my mistress. <laughs> <laughs> see, that, I feel like, would fly in France. They're like, oh, yes, well. Yeah, yeah. On, we we. While another couple said they were out to pick daffodils before the flowers all die. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Another, like, just because you write it on the form doesn't mean it's an okay reason. <laughs> That's not, like, just because you filled out the form doesn't mean <laughs> that you're covered. Especially if your reason is assault and battery. <laughs> Like that doesn't suddenly make it legal. No, no, I have this. The shit out of somebody. I filled out the form, though. <laughs> that's that's not a permission slip. I did the paperwork. Come on, work with me here. <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> I just, I, the, the, I, I, you got to give him credit for the honesty. Yeah, it's also a written confession, unfortunately. <laughs> potato, <laughs> potato. Um. Yeah. But you do have to admire the honesty. Uh, like, so listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I need, I need, I'm gonna go out. I'll be back. I swear. Um. All right. So the and next, then I'm gonna go right back in quarantine, and I'm gonna wear my mask while I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Safety first. Um. This is from Denver. So this is this is from your neck Ooh. of the woods. Um. You know, yeah, you're not supposed to leave the scene of an accident. Yeah. I think that co that's covered here because this is just, this is kind of a fucking hell of a thing. Car blocked South, Pal South Platte River Trail on bridge near Denver Animal Shelter. Look at that shit. On Thursday, Are you supposed to be driving on that bridge? Because it's awfully narrow. No, you're not. It's That's not a footbridge, I imagine. On Thursday morning, walkers and bicyclists came across an unusual obstacle on the South Platte River Trail. A vehicle wedged into a sharp turn on the path near a bridge. 
the car. All which, the Friends fans are like, pivot! <laughs> the car, which appears to be a Nissan SUV, was stuck on a 90-degree turn near a bridge on the path near the Denver Animal Shelter. The car was stuck on the rest, western side of the river, the police department said the vehicle was reported around 5.30 a.m. It's since been told the vehicle hadn't been reported stolen. The driver was not at the scene. How did they tow it? Very carefully, I imagine. They, they uh, crazy. Like, how did they get a tow truck up there? They probably if that they, Nissan barely fits. They probably started with some winches, I, I imagine. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be need, need, so that car is going to need some fucking work. If you need some body work, probably, yeah, because they probably were not terribly careful. No. I, mean, I will admit to getting stuck on, well, accidentally getting on a bike lane on the Brooklyn Bridge that was kind of that narrow. Luckily, it was a straight shot. Oh, that's right. I remember you telling me that. This was like 4.30 in the morning, and yeah. Woody was out, and I took a wrong turn. Yeah. But I just, okay. You, you do. Maybe it's Nissan drivers, because you drive a Nissan. Yeah. <laughs> So your dumbass is up here driving on the footbridge, which is not intended for cars, and you no. get stuck and leave. Did I you also want to know how the fuck he got out of the car. The hatch. Yeah, he Probably. had to crawl out the back. Because look at that driver's side door. <laughs> yep, it is pinned room. shut. He crawled out the back of that fucker. I. What in God's name? You can't, it's not like, okay, well, I'm done. I'm just, wash my hands of it. It'll be fine. I'm just, I'm just going to go home. Y'all can handle it. this ever happened. They can take it from here. You don't need me. So I'll just get in the way. And at least as far as we've experienced, the traffic around here is not that bad. Like, if it was New Jersey, I'd be like, you know what? Desperate times. Maybe Christy closed down a lane of the bridge again. But like around the traffic's not that bad. Somebody been drunk is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because, you know, if I if something like this happened to me, well, it wouldn't happen to me because I wouldn't fucking do this. But <laughs> you're not a fucking idiot. I call somebody. I wouldn't just leap like, well, car stuck. I guess I'll get another one. Did you want to have to explain that to the AAA guy? <laughs> so what happened here? I, I don't I don't know. Um, <laughs> it just it just ended. I lost control of the car and it just did that. They're, they're, I don't know how. Did you ever just eat so many shrooms you would never <laughs> We do have legal weed. Yeah. But that so that they are they are literally good that gets Matthew's like that's it I'll deal with this in the morning <laughs> <laughs> I mean just, they're going to find you yeah Th that car that, that little that little part of the car that they have blurred out it's... the reason they have it blurred out is because if you type those numbers into a particular website it'll tell you exactly who owns that car and where they live uh <sighs> But, but that's not the only instance this week of drivers just thinking they can just whistle and walk away innocently or drive away as, as the case may be. Fucking look at this. Holy shit. Motorist crashes into West Yorkshire house and drives off with front door lodged in the windshield. Oh my God. 18-year-old wow. Audi driver collided with a vehicle before hitting the front porch of a house in Dewsbury. Um, police uh, posted a photograph of the Audi car on Twitter. The driver, an 18-year-old man, collided with another car before hitting the front porch of the house. Despite the property's front door being lodged in the car's roof, the motorist continued driving several meters. How could he see? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he thought he this'll be fine. It'll buff out. Just, just act casual. Nobody will notice. <laughs> just fly casual, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have a door in no. your windshield. Well, I do? Where? 
It's like that bit in John, John Wick. I don't know if you notice, you got a crack in your windshield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need to call Aurelio immediately. <laughs> safe flight repair, safe flight replace. <laughs> oh, God, now. You call the safe flight guy, he's just going to be like, now. <laughs> safe flight repair, safe flight replace. No. Every, everybody outside of America is like, going, what? What are you talking about? I make 12 fucking dollars an hour, and no. Everybody else has now has got the fucking safe light jingle stuck in their fucking heads. I could do cars for kids next if that would no. help. <laughs> no. no. Dan never experienced cars for kids till he moved to New Jersey and it became the bane of his existence in New Jersey. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Fucking you everybody on YouTube is gonna lose their shit. I love it. <laughs> Um, so fuck y'all. Fuck them kids. Anyway, um, so yeah, no one was apparently seriously hurt, but that's some okay, it's an Audi. I I, I just realized I was about to say the audacity, and you know what? <laughs> the I was I wasn't wrong. Um like imagine having to call the police and be like, somebody drove off with our front door. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm our sorry, front door. Somebody broke through your front door. No, they no, took no. it. No, no, it's part of the car now. They didn't even get out of the car. They just drove off with my front door, <laughs> and it's cold. Is it, what? What in the fuck? <laughs> how? How drunk? It'll be <laughs> fine. It'll be fine. I'll say. I'll say. I'll. I'll send it back to them. I'll put it. In, <laughs> I'll put it in the mail. I'll buy some stamps in the morning. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <sighs> Speaking of uh, stuff that was not thought through real well, it is winter, and Canada gets very cold in the winter. I don't. I, now you might think Nash. That's kind of self-evident. Why are you speaking to us as though we're idiots? Because. Some of you may, in fact, be idiots. I mean, probability would suggest that at least some of our audience are idiots. Thief steals empty cash register, jumps into icy <gasps> river to evade Winnipeg police. You would rather die? <laughs> police say man refused to be rescued from water for almost half an hour. 32-year-old man is in custody after he reportedly stole an empty cash register and tried to get away by swimming in the icy water of the Assiniboine. I think I'm saying that right. Assiniboine River. Assiniboine River? <laughs> I, I, too, would jump into the Assiniboine River. It's 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 Assiniboine. <laughs> I, I, I presume there's there's some French going on there. Um, the commenters will yell at us. They'll let us know. Of course they will. Police were called uh, after people saw a man damaging the door of a closed business. Police say the person stole an empty cash register and ran the direction of the river. Okay, here's the thing. When a business is closed, they've taken all the money out. It doesn't live in the cash register. You can tell motherfucking... The little, the little drawers come out. Yep. And they usually go in a safe. You can tell a motherfucker ain't never worked retail. Because, yeah. dang. Officers, including the K-9 unit, followed the person's tracks in fresh snow, so this is not a genius here. As they closed in on the man, he jumped in the river, trying to walk on the ice, but falling through and swimming in the chilly water. Two water rescue units from Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service came to try to rescue him, but he refused to be rescued for nearly half an hour. Sir, come here. No, you're going to yell at me. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. I don't know what it's from, but I know that's what you always say. <laughs> no, you're going to yell at me. <laughs> Daddy's going to kill Ralphie. <laughs> like, did you think eventually they were just going to go away? <laughs> And did you think that was going to be before you got hypothermia and died? We're not talking about a, about a rocket scientist here, though, Tara. Because yeah, I feel like even the dumbest of people <laughs> can feel when their limbs numb when their limbs start to go numb. 
I was about to say when their lungs start to go numb. Even the stupidest person can tell when they can't move anymore. Have you, have you never encountered a complete imbecile who thinks it, this is a hold my beer situation? They are convinced they can do the stupid thing, even though it's not possible in the world. They are special enough and stupid enough to make the stupid thing happen. They are determined. Like, the fact that you're too stupid to understand doesn't mean that the science doesn't still work. Like, a Cinnaboyan. A Cinnaboyan. It's a Cinnabon. It's a Cinnabon River. It's a Cinnaboyan. Doesn't that sound delightful? Except you know, I mean, I know it would, I know it would look kind of porny, but a river of that icing. <laughs> Ew! It would kind of look like the stuff from that movie that Danny made us watch. <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah. now that I mention it, Just, but they don't leave. They, they don't. It's not like they give up and go home. And I'm gonna be like, all right, you got us. If anything, more are going to show up with bigger yeah. equipment and shit. Eventually, they're going to have to fish your body out of that water. I mean, do you know how much paperwork it is if you fucking die? They don't want to deal with that shit. They want yeah. to go home before, you know, nine o'clock, for Christ's sake. Is it more paperwork to arrest someone or collect a body? Probably the body. I'm Probably, willing to, then yeah. you have to get a coroner. Yeah, you gotta wake some people up, knock on doors, somebody has to come identify the idiot. What movie was that? It was literally called The, the Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. And we did it for a podcast. And I don't remember mm. the name of the podcast or I would plug it. It's, it's, yeah, I don't remember right now either. I feel bad. It's been a while. Um, oh well. Danny does good stuff though. He's doing that uh, song v song with uh, Todd these days. Actually. That's true. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, this is Connecticut, and this is, this is just, you know, this is us, sadly, I hate that. This is what I've done with myself, this is my brand, God fucking help me. Uh, Naugatuck, uh, Connecticut. Naugatuck! Man arrested for creating disturbance in backyard assaulting officers. Now that sounds kind of innocent. Until you get to the first line of the story. Naugatuck police say they arrested a half-dressed man for, quote, humping trees, screaming, eating branches, and assaulting officers. That's really on brand for Naugatuck, honestly. John, that sounds about right. John Edward Figner, 36, was charged with second-degree criminal trespass. Second degree breach of the peace, interfering with an officer and assault on a public safety officer. Police say they were sent to a backyard on November 12th, around uh, 3 p.m. When they arrived, they say Fignar ran into a nearby house, which caused its residents to flee in fear. Now, the fact that people was ran... Was it like Groot's house? What? Was it like Groot's house? No. Is that why they were afraid? No. See, no, no. What, what I think, they say he was half-dressed. You have to guess which half. Which half? And I'm thinking I know which half, judging by why what happened in the house. Look, you, you see, you see, you see a dick coming at you. You kind of want to get out of the way. Just randomly in the daytime, suddenly dick, suddenly penis. Yeah. You kind of want to go. Whoa! Clear path. <laughs> I did not request that. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> I didn't order that. Please send that back. Especially if that dick has recently been humping a tree, because it probably is not looking its best. What? what in the god fucking yeah. hell? When does this get fun? Humping trees, screaming, and eating branches. Just a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Now let's get excited about in the nutmeg state. After a long week of the old grind, you just want to relax, hump a couple trees, yell at the Lord Almighty, shove half a sycamore down your throat. And, and that's without even considering that he humped a thing. Yep. And they eat its parts. Yeah. 
what kind of porn is this guy watching? I I don't know. This is he's. I think he's inventing a new genre. That little bongo man is back. <laughs> I don't hear him. I think him. it's like my monitor rocking, like vibrating or something hitting my monitor. I don't know. I don't hear the bongo man. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> I just. <sighs> but yes, Connecticut is the nutmeg state. That is its name. It's on. Yeah, it's the nut. And con- Connecticut, Connecticutians refer to themselves as nutmeggers. Well, this guy probably does too. Oh, yeah. And I was about to say that's not a kink, but apparently I'm wrong. Apparently you're wrong. <laughs> why? Uh, why? Of all the things, a tree. Like, my dude, there are alternatives that won't leave you with a breeze. So much. Yeah. And I mean, probably aren't covered in bugs. If, you, if you're pulling splinters out of your dick, something has gone terribly wrong. Yeah. Generally, if you're looking for something to fuck, you want something that's non abrasive. Right. That is not a home for bugs or small animals. Definitely. And that you can be reasonably sure no dog has peed on in the last 24 hours. Oh, God. Oh, mm. that's a new, that's just a new dimension to this whole thing you added there, Tara. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, and that's not the only criteria, but it's a good place to start. Puts a new maybe he, watched the, maybe he watched the Guardians of the Galaxy porn that I watched, maybe. Oz says, puts a new meaning to the word woodpecker. <laughs> That's what the sound sounds like. <laughs> it's a boy humping a tree. Maybe. <laughs> Something on my desk sounds like a woodpecker. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the first thing we learned tonight... Dogs can't pee at human crotch level. Have you never seen a great game? They some big dogs, man. Now, I, I, I think the uh, the first thing we learned tonight is um, don't fuck trees. I, I don't didn't know we had that had to be a lesson. I, things you didn't think you had to write down. No really, throwers don't fuck don't fuck trees. Like that's that's not. I mean, yeah, I guess you could. There's nothing really wrong with it but you know it's kind of you're involving others just by the action of a tree is outside at least fuck a tree in the privacy of your own yard if you fuck a tree in the forest and no one's around to hear it do you make a sound (laughs) (laughs) the monks are still considering that one (laughs) Um, we've learned that sometimes you just have to, you got to learn when to say, I give up, you know, your limits because yeah. you've already failed. You've completely failed the crime. The crime is over. You when failed. You've fallen through the frozen river with your empty cash register. You're cut your beat. Yeah. You, 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 that's a wash. It's time to call it a day. Um, We've learned sometimes someone can drive away with your front door in their car and try to make a go of it. Things I didn't know I had to be worried about. Um, We've also learned just because you leave the car there doesn't mean you're not in trouble. Yeah. (laughs) If you aren't there... You're still in trouble. It's still your car. They know who you are, stupid. It's come on. No We've, matter how much whistling you do walking away, they, with your hands in your pockets looking casual, they're gonna catch you. Oh, Omega. Oh I drove in. Haven't you people ever heard of stealing the goddamn door? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've learned that even if you fill out all the correct paperwork, that doesn't mean what you want to do is necessarily legal. Yeah. 
You know, just just because you fill out the form doesn't mean it's approved. Yeah. <laughs> Although, bless your heart for the fucking honesty. I mean, good on you. And finally, we've learned that uh, for the moment, it's completely legal to have a flamethrower in New York. Guys, go knock yourselves out. Yeah, no, no, don't go. No. <laughs> Please don't. We, 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 there, there's a thing that legal and wise are often two very different things. You remember Jurassic Park when Jeff Goldblum said, you know, you're scientists. We're so busy thinking about whether or not you could. You never thought about whether you should. Could you have a flamethrower? Yes. Should you have a flamethrower? Yes. No. 